A bit of backstory. This particular incident happened when I was eight or nine. We stayed in a total dive of a place. Bullying, abuse, and murder was rife there. But the incident I'm telling you guys about is basically unrelated. It was another dull morning like any other, when I, along with my brother and two sisters, woke up for the school day. We had an average breakfast, then we started putting our clothes on, when all of a sudden, from our second floor balcony, we heard a window smash, followed by these horrible wails and shrieks. We ran to my bedroom window to see what was going on, and as I look over, I see plumes and plumes of thick black smoke bellowing out from this smash window, along with the silhouette of a young man screaming, help, help, please, my kids are dying, all the while you can hear the screams from a woman on the other side. I could only look on in childlike speechless horror as I witnessed this guy's sheer moment of madness. His wrists and fingers lacerated due to putting the window through, screaming now like a wild beast, making inhuman noises and begging for someone to get his family out. We heard the woman's scream stop after a while, as we watched on totally transfixed and aghast at the same time. My mom was crying, trying to get us away from the window, but because there were the four of us and we played with the kids, she knew she'd have a fight on her hands, so she goes out to get help. That's when the poor guy starts lifting himself up onto the inner window ledge, just to get away from the roaring heat. We just couldn't see with the smoke. Neighbors by this point were grabbing ladders, shouting anything to try to keep the guy from jumping, but their pleas were utterly futile. This guy was obviously at the end of his rope, because we were two balconies up, with a weight of about 20 to 25 feet to the ground. My childlike brain conjured the man in my thoughts as a pancake as he jumped. It was terrifying. In a total state of psychosis, nothing registered on the poor man's face. He repeated over and over again, I'm sorry, followed by the names of his loved ones. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It was heartbreaking. That's when he jumps out and he completely misses the first balcony. We see both of his legs snap as they make impact with the solid concrete below. I'll never forget that repungent sound when bone meets concrete. His body totally red from the heat, he kind of sits up totally hysterical while a few locals go to help him, followed by the ambulances. It turned out later that the masonets were fully insulated with extremely flammable material, and sometime in the wee hours an electrical fire started from a socket which set the house ablaze within minutes. The poor man's wife and four children, whom my siblings and I used to play with, had perished in the fire that day. It easily could have been us. So I've never forgotten the tale or their father's manic face on that terrible day.